Hey there, welcome back. We have got an absolutely astonishing five recipes for you today. They are all kind of meaty, plant-based hacks. Hack, hack, hack. And the first one is Thai no fish cakes. That is incredible. It's followed by the Piri Piri Chorizo Bake. The world famous faux gras is up next. With Alexis Gautier, of course. Followed by the super health boosting smoothies. Mini Banafi meringues next. Go on then. This is a proper selection for you and we're gonna start off with those things. The incredible Thai no fish cakes. Oh, this is just basically the perfect finger food. Oh, I wanna eat that right now. Oh my Don't goodness. You? I remember when we first cooked this recipe and it was a bit like a wow moment, a complete wow moment. So good, because obviously you've got the kind of deliciousness of the potato mm -hmm. and we're using a jackfruit which has just gone into that pan to simulate fish in a fish cake. Mm -hmm. But of course, we've got all of those incredible Thai herbs and flavors, the Thai curry paste going in there to make it taste absolutely incredible. It's remarkable how much um, like this weird fruit that used to be just basically weird fruit is now like being used for vegan meat. Absolutely. And it, of course, it's an equatorial yeah. fruit comes off a tree, um, so, but it's really big, so it's actually quite good for the environment because you get so much yield from it. And potato is just something that acts a <laughs> wonderful binder. It's obviously really filling, incredibly satisfying. It's just basically like a weird shaped chip. <laughs> and of course, if you think about it, this is like a fun thing to make. Oh, like man. when you're making a burger or anything with your mm. hands yeah. is a good thing to do. It's good to do with kids too. I like this as well because, I mean, obviously this recipe is like, I'll live and die by it, it's amazing. But if you wanted to tweak up the flavor profile that's inside, you could absolutely do that too. Totally. Yeah. And you can see we've played around with flavors here. Um, we're essentially making a, a dipping sauce. We kind of call this a Thai tear sauce, like a tartare sauce, mm -hmm. but a Thai version. Incredible. And, oh man. Do you know what would go really well here? What's Some that? peas and a big <laughs> portion of oven chips. I'll sack off the peas, but I'll definitely want to eat that thing. Yeah, oh, mate. What's next? Oh, Piri Piri Chorizo Bake is up next. It's from our second book, Bish Bash Bosh, and it is a banger. So we're going to show you in this recipe how to make any veggie sausage into a chorizo style sausage just with herbs and spices. Now, if you're a fan of heat, you are going to love this recipe. Of course, a tray bake is a great thing to do at any time because you're letting the oven do the work and you can, mm. as long as you get the cooking times right, you know, pop your sweet potato in first because that's going to take longer to cook than, say, your peppers. As long as you get that timing right, you can cook like all the fruits and veggies together, yeah. which is a great thing because, of course, tomato is a fruit. Uh, well, Let's not forget. Apparently it's so, yeah. It is. It's so bizarre. Do you, know another, do you know what an olive is? Is, is it a fruit or a vegetable? It's a berry. It's a fruit. Is it? It's a fruit, yeah. Oh, a fruit. Because it's a holder of seeds, right? Yeah, but it's, it, 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 it's, is it a berry? <laughs> like an avocado is a berry? It's a fruit, I checked okay. yesterday. Okay, okay. Fair, fair. <laughs> I googled it. But do you know what I do know? This is going to be absolutely delightful. One of my favorite things about this recipe is the tray bake element of it. Because like we said before, tray baking is quite easy. Yes, absolutely. Okay. And of course, this is a delicious peri-peri sauce. That is gonna be a kind of Portuguese-inspired, spicy, hot, rich, smoky sauce to go with these gorgeous little homemade chorizo sausages. Now, those sausages, we, there's many brands out there, but our personal favorite is, um, well, Linda. Good old Linda. She's great. But you can make any sausage taste amazing by doing exactly what we're gonna do here. We're gonna add some cayenne pepper, some garlic, some fennel, some paprika, and some maple syrup. And this is gonna really simulate the flavor of chorizo. And then finally, that red wine, combined with the maple syrup, is gonna kind of glaze onto those sausages, giving you a real sweet, smoky, chorizo-like taste. They're almost like meatballs. Absolutely. And yeah, I mean, they, they've just taken a life of their own. I mean, like, you, I mean, you could just go so boring with the sausage, just put it in bread and have a hot dog, or you could make this. Now, if you were a sausage, what would you rather? I'd rather be this sausage. I would rather be this. Yeah, absolutely. Plant-based, smoky, <laughs> spicy, and in a tray of colorful vegetables just like that. Eating the rainbow has never looked so good. <laughs> that is an absolutely delicious tray bake, our Piri Piri Chorizo tray bake. Not a piece of meat in sight, packed with planty goodness. Serving it on rice is a great idea, but you know what? You could pop that in a pit of bread with oh, a little yeah. bit of uh, dairy-free yogurt and some mint or something just to cool it down and it would be really cool. This is a really versatile recipe, I love it. Of course, that piri piri sauce, man, is so hot. Yeah, it's so fire. spicy, oh, so yeah. sweet. We put a scotch bonnet in, didn't we? Uh, One time, remember? <laughs> yes. And it was like, Woo! Hot, hot, hot. 
Next up, we have a super special treat for you. We made this with Alexis Gauthier, the Michelin star chef, and this is called faux gras. And why is it called faux gras? Well, it's kind of like the vegan version of foie gras, which is a bad thing, and we don't like that cruelty. So we wanted to make a vegan version, so we worked with Alexis to yeah. create this. Now, if you're ever in London in the Soho area, go and check his restaurant out, go, go to a Soho. It's amazing. Henry and I went there, and uh, we came out quite drunk. Yes, we did indeed. That Truth was be told. great fun, but his food is amazing and this is essentially like a pate a faux gras pate but plant-based and we're adding mushrooms we're adding brandy we're gonna add some beetroot juice as well for color some lentils and then let the blender bring everything together and mix it all down to like a smooth pate. Do you know when um, sometimes people make things for other people at Christmas? Yes. So you could make loads of this and put it in little pots and wrap around a little ribbon and then give it to your nearest and dearest and you'll save bucket loads of money on Christmas <laughs> presents and they get something really healthy and plant-based to eat too. Doesn't that look good? I mean, think of all the healthy things that went in there, right? You've got the mm. lentils, you've got those walnuts, you've got the soy sauce, you've got just mushrooms, so much deliciousness, so much umami, mm. and of course, you've got to get that vegan butter on top. Yeah, because that ve melted vegan butter will sort of solidify and look like the fat that would be on a fo <laughs> foie gras. Um, I think also, right, not just uh, like dipping bread in here or, yeah. or a breadstick, you could potentially, if you add a little bit of water in, turn it into a pasta sauce. Oh, wow. Couldn't that be a cool thing? Deep, that's deep, That bro. could be cool. <laughs> but anyway. And now you can see, look, it's, it's hardened. That looks just like the real deal, but no cruelty involved in this one. And of course, you've got to have a good crunchy sourdough. Oh man, sourdough bread is the thing. <laughs> like, like, who doesn't like sourdough bread? Everyone loves it. Especially with that one. I mean, come on, man, it's amazing. Next up, we're gonna show you how to get the vegetables, the phytonutrients, the plant nutrients into your body in the form of two smoothies. Yeah, smoothies are great. Henry and I drink one literally every single day. Usually we go green, sometimes we go cream, but this <laughs> is two, like, two different ones that you might wanna check out. So we've got a berry smoothie for you today and also a kind of banana oat smoothie both of them packed with oats, which are gonna give you slow burn energy, some fiber, some protein, of course, plant-based milk, which is always yeah. a good thing, and a banana. I mean, does anyone in the world not like bananas? I love bananas. Yeah. I love them, <laughs> I think they're amazing. My grandmother used to go like only for the black banana because she says it's super duper sweet. It is, it's too sweet though. Yeah, it can be a bit sweet. I had a black banana the other day and I was like, yeah, God, this is <laughs> super weird. Anyway, there we go. So if you wanna pop some protein in there, go for it. But one thing we really recommend is get some flaxseed in there. It's going to be packed with omega oils, which are really good for you, especially if you're following a plant-based diet. Oh my goodness gracious. The smoothie is a wonderful thing. It should never be um, like underestimated because you can have it as a really healthy snack post-gym to get that pump on. Or I have it for my breakfast. Absolutely. We try and get a smoothie in every single day. Mm. As Ian said, green is always good. Berries are good, packed with antioxidants. Banana is good, packed with potassium. They are two beautiful looking smoothies and they taste absolutely incredible. And of course, paper straws, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> paper straws or metal straws only. Let's all be sustainable. Do you remember back in the day, we used to use plastic straws before we, did. we knew better, like five years ago. Now it's all about the paper straws. Keep on learning all the time. And what you are about to learn is how to make meringue out of chickpea water. So these are our mini banoffee meringues. Banoffee has got that kind of banana toffee flavor. And chickpea water, tell me about that, Ian. Well, chickpea water, Aquafaba literally means, aquafaba basically means bean water, and it is literally the water that you find in a can of chickpeas. And if you pour it into a blender with a little bit of um, cream of tartar and a little bit of sugar, that happens. I mean, oh, look wow. at this. So this you would call stiff peaks, okay? Stiff peaks means that it is basically a kind of solid lump of meringue and it will hold its shape. And that was just chickpeas mm. that created this thing that you're looking at here. From chickpea to cloud. <laughs> in, 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 in no time at all, wonderful. Beautiful. Next up, we're gonna show you how to make an absolutely delicious thick cream out of cashews and coconut milk, and a little bit of heat. Now, obviously we're giving you this recipe here, right here, and the show notes, you've got the recipe below. Um, but if you wanted our cookbook, which it came from, it's, this is from Bish Bash Bosch, which is the second cookbook. It's, uh, there's loads of recipes. In <laughs> it's packed full of goodness. Yeah. Um, but we're happy for you to just watch this and enjoy this. We ask one favor of you, do 
let us know what you thought down in the comments below. And if you're not already subscribers of Bosch, then hit that subscribe button because we make delicious plant-based recipes like this all the time. Yeah, all the time. There's loads of new recipes coming out. Um, and do you know what? Like, I don't know which decade or which day or which year you're watching this, but I can say <laughs> there's a really nice recipe coming really soon because that's what we do. Yeah, and we ain't going to stop anytime no. soon. So now we've just made a super quick little sweet sticky sauce and that is going to be drizzled all over the top of those meringues. And this is a delicious dessert we're making mm. right here. Yeah, absolutely. And also that's just got my whole brain thinking about this. If you're mm. sat at home watching this, which decade are you in? And has this recipe stood the test of time? My guess is absolutely. Let's hope so. This could be 35 years from now and it will still be utterly delicious. We will be old then. No, no. 35 years. We'll be proper old. I know. God. <laughs> we'll be like 70. Will we still be eating delicious things like this when we're 70? All right, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed, hopefully so. And of course, a bit of dark chocolate shaving on the top is so crucial to get that beautiful end shot. Doesn't that look good? It does. It's a wonderful thing. It's a party piece. Oh. It's the sort of thing that's going to impress everybody who comes around to your house who's just had their main big meal and that's the dessert. So there you have it, that is five absolutely delicious dishes from our Living on the Veg TV show that we wanted to share with you here through your phone or TV screen or computer screen. I don't know about you but my favourite out of that whole bunch was the first one. Oh yeah? Really? Yeah, the jackfruit chai fish cakes are something else. I, do you know what? I would have said that, but my second option, since you've nicked that one, would be the uh, Piri Piri Chorizo Bake. <sighs> I mean, so good. To be fair, I mean like, the videos come much tastier. That is a tasty video right there. That is a very tasty video, and you have been a tasty audience. Thanks for being here, we will see you next time. See you later guys! Bye bye. Peace. <laughs>